Welcome to Startup Recon. I'm Marissa Gillam and I'm here with Gareth, who is the founder of Fika. Uh, would you please introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm Gareth. I'm co-founder, co-CEO at Fika. Hi. And so can you explain what it is that Fika does? Sure. Yeah, we're a mental fitness platform. Um, we are effectively a, a skills development and education business. We're about um, enabling people to build um, proactive skills when it um, to help them manage their mental fitness in the long term. Great. And uh, when were you founded? Uh, we were founded in 2017, but we well December 2017, but we were in the planning way before then but officially the company was founded in 2017. And do you have any co-founders? Yes, so yes, as myself and Nick um both co-founders, co-CEO um of of Fika. What would you say your unique selling point is? The fact that we are as I mentioned before an education company. So mm -hmm. there are we're not we don't come at mental fitness in the concept of tools for maintenance of your mental well-being or you know reactive services we are a truly preventative and proactive company which is rooted in education so it's about understanding and building mental health literacy uh, and enabling people to actually understand how their mental health works because it's something mm -hmm. that generally society and you know culturally we're not we're not aware of um, the underpinnings of our mental health or the mental health spectrum at all really and that's the gap that we look to fill. And so who would you say you typically sell to uh, in an organisation? We work across a number of sectors. Um, our, our, our biggest um, and our start point really was in was in education. As we were building an education company, we wanted to start in, in education. So we work primarily with, with universities and are moving into um, other areas within education. Um, and we typically um, sell to actually it's quite a, a wide range within those university partners. So it might be. Um, it's really people who are dependent for or looking for skills development. So in some areas that might be heads of school, in other areas it might be vice chancellor or it might be um, director of student services, etc. So quite a broad range of clients really. Amazing. Are you hiring at the moment? Obviously the coronavirus situation has made it a bit difficult for everyone. Yes, yeah, we are. We're, um, we're looking for five roles at the moment across engineering and um, client success uh, management and um, product so yeah we're we are hiring oh amazing um you obviously mentioned uh before and i've seen on your website as well it, the idea of uh mental fitness versus mental health um could you elaborate a little bit more on that yeah i mean how long have you got i mean go, I'll get my soapbox <laughs> I can, I can attack you all day now um, <laughs> I think for us uh, I mean both Nick and I have very personal stories behind the founding of Fika it's why we yeah. decided to um, leave what we were doing and, and start this business without going into those um, we have spent a long time in research and development so we've only been actively um, working with clients really since September last year so we spent a good couple of years in R&D um, really looking at the, the kind of problem behind the problem and cut a long story short where we've really come out the come, come at this is when we talk about mental fitness it the key thing with fitness is that fitness can be good and bad but when we think of fitness it's very approachable and acceptable and we almost hero um being physically unfit culturally it's like something that we we all we do our, we do our group challenges and it's all you know we we're all about proactively working together to overcome you know when it's about um, levels of, of poor physical fitness and actually the same is true for our, our mental fitness in the sense that it can be identified worked on there are lots of things that we can do ourselves and we're trying to actively move away from still what is a lot of stigma associated with the mental health spectrum in yeah. the context of actually that the problem we have is that mental health is overridingly associated with negative connotations but the reality is is that mental health isn't positive or negative it's a spectrum just mm -hmm. like physical health is positive and negative um so we've we've really focused on fitness just because it has that it has a totally different connotation and it empowers it's something that a you can take responsibility for yourself but you also understand that it has levels and it can be good and and you know it could be good and bad and you kind of find your level and decide what you you want to work on and kind of and how you um develop in that area obviously you said just then about uh your investment into uh research and development uh, could you maybe elaborate a little bit more on that as well 
Yeah, sure. I guess there's two, two key things, really. We always wanted to build scale. So how can you um, develop something that will overcome a large global, global problem using technology? And therefore, you need to think about how can you create a format or, it's, or a way of delivering content that people will, will work. And, you know, we've we invested heavily in primary and secondary evidence to prove the academic and scientific rigor of the outcomes that we we create so we've had to spend a lot of time to create a format that can be done in a very digestible way but can scale to meet the demands of our framework and then we've invested a lot in the actual in the actual content itself so it's it's kind of two things really it's co content and format and that's where we've um, spent the best part of two years really identifying what is the best way to get across this learning and skills development but in a format that is really scalable and digestible and yet still achieves the outcomes scientifically that we want to we want to measure and would you say that you see fika as more of a service or more of a, as a product that you can maybe productize to other people i personally find it quite difficult to draw a line between those yeah. two things um, i think you know as a you know i've spent spent my previous life was in a service design consultancy and you know products yeah. exist within services and i don't think you can really draw a distinction between the two i mean we have a product so you know if you think in terms of the physical touch points and delivery of content and the, the you know the product that you put usage metrics and analytics and all those things around it but then also we have a service in the context of that it needs to be a journey and it needs to be mindful of how it hits the objectives of not only the key users of the product but the key stakeholders within the service and how you kind of design that for all of the different stakeholders associated within that service proposition so i think we have a very defined product that overcomes the, the problem that we set out to solve but it needs to be considered within the context of a wider service proposition ultimately yeah. because that's where you you think about your long-term scale and and growth and ultimately you have lots of products within a, a service over over time as you develop that service proposition yeah so you say it's probably a mixture of both of the two <laughs> amazing um well that's that's all the questions i have today it's been a pleasure to talk to you and hear more about the company um, and thank you for your time no, no worries at all thank you for having me